So this is the circuit that actually makes this thing work. Uh, this is the transmitter, so the part that's actually in the, the foot pedal outside that generates a signal and sends it. And this is the receiver, which is what's in that little like hot glued bundle that is plugged into the wall underneath the bench. And this is where the noise actually comes from that we hear when the foot pedal gets pushed. So when the foot pedal is pushed, uh, this switch closes and it basically just delivers 9 volts to the rest of the circuit. So the rest of the circuit in this case does two things. First, there's a, uh, an A-stable 555 and that will basically generate a square wave and in this case I think it's about 70 hertz and the duty cycle is a little over uh, 50 percent so I'll exaggerate that a little bit here but uh, you get a square wave out that looks like that and that is the signal on that wire right there so this chip is the important thing because that's what's actually allowing it to talk over radio and uh, these chips are really simplistic. All that they do is generate the uh, carrier tone and then they modulate it with the signal that you give them. In this case it's uh, an AM signal and it is generating a carrier tone of 433 megahertz. So when the signal you send it is low, the amplitude, because it's amplitude modulated, is going to be zero. So the signal out of the antenna is basically zero. As soon as this gets uh, turned high uh, out the square wave, it immediately starts going nuts at 433 megahertz, and then when it gets to the next, uh, the lowering in the square wave, it will flatten off again and basically send nothing. And then when it goes to the next one, it'll oscillate like crazy again and, uh, and then go flat. So you actually have the transmitter turning on full blast when the square wave is high and the transmitter off when the square wave is low and that's the signal that's getting sent whenever the foot pedal is depressed. So when this signal gets to the receiver it's reasonably easy to pick up but the difficult part is actually determining whether or not you're receiving a signal or whether you're receiving noise because these chips uh, have just enough brains in them that they're really, really annoying. They actually, the receiver has this like automatic gain feature in it that will adjust the uh, signal out such that the highest voltage in the signal out is al always roughly the same, which is actually really useful if you're trying to transmit data with one of these. But if you're just trying to detect whether something is on or off, it's really not very useful because that means that it amplifies your noise and it looks, it, it, your noise is as loud as your signal, although it's different than your signal and that's how we have to actually determine whether or not the signal is being transmitted. So When the foot pedal is depressed, the signal that we get out of this receiver is kind of a noisier version of what we sent in. It's this same square wave, but of course, because we've transmitted it and received it and it's gone through a handful of stuff, it's a little maybe wavy at the edges. I'm not 100% sure how wavy because I didn't actually have a, uh, an oscilloscope on hand to analyze these signals. Instead, I was trying to use an FFT app on my phone and play all these signals through a speaker, which sounds really horrible, but it actually kind of worked to do rough analysis. So, uh... But when you have this signal, this is what I'm assuming it looks like, and the, uh, the noise is, because it is amplified by this auto gain feature, it's on par here, so it goes, the, the highest extent is going to be about the same, and I don't know exactly what it looks like, but you know, maybe it's sort of a random looking thing like that, and it's about as tall. So, this goes between 0 volts and whatever the max is, and this goes between 0 volts and whatever the max is of the auto gain, which means that you can't just take the, the peak voltage and say, is it on if the peak voltage is above some level? So I use uh, what is really two stages of really simple analysis. First, a low-pass filter, and second, a uh, trim pot that is just there to put in a, a tunable attenuation of the signal. Uh, before sending it into a transistor which is functioning as a pure switch to turn on the buzzer. Now, as soon as this signal goes through the low-pass filter, 
uh, what happens is that this signal is, when it's high, it's trying to charge this capacitor, and when it's low, it's trying to discharge this capacitor, of course, through this resistor that slows it down a little bit. So, when you have a really slow signal like this, that's like 70 hertz, you actually have time to charge and discharge the capacitor. So it's passing the low frequency signals. That's why it's a low pass filter. So you get something down here, and then it starts to charge the capacitor, and it gets there slowly, but it does get there. And then when you drop low, it gets there slowly, but it does get there, and you'll, you'll pass a version of that signal. And it will go all the way high, and it will go all the way low. Now, when you try to pass the noise, the noise level is, or the noise signal, if that's a thing, the noise signal, is fluctuating so quickly that it doesn't have time to ever fully charge or discharge the capacitor. So it basically just smooths this off, and you end up with a nearly constant voltage that is uh, representative of the average voltage of the noise. Now, the average of both of these signals is going to be almost the same. The duty cycle, this is a little over 50%, but I have no idea what the duty cycle of the noise is, so I couldn't really do anything with that. Now, this level is actually still above zero, because this is a, a complete DC circuit. So if this, this is my axis here, so this is zero volts, this is whatever the maximum voltage is that it achieves over here. This is on the same axis. Uh, this is going to be, if this is like 3 volts, this is like a volt and a half, which means that it's still too much, and it's always going to turn on this transistor. Now, the transistor turns on whenever there's a voltage applied to the base of more than about 0.7. I think I actually measured this one, and it was like 0.68 or something like that, but uh, very close to 0.7. That's a rule of thumb. So we need to drop this signal down to where it is just below that threshold. And that's what I do with this trim pot right here. This is like the simplest voltage divider you can get. And the best thing is that it's on a screwdriver uh, so you can adjust it. And that will drop this down if, if you assume for the sake of the drawing that this is cutting it in half. So it's a 1K trim pot. If you've got 500 ohms above and 500 ohms below, then uh, this is going to go from about one on the grid to about a half on the grid right here, uh, which is, say that's below the threshold that we need to turn on the buzzer. Now, when the signal goes through that same thing, it's gonna get cut down. So it's gonna be about zero, and then it's gonna go up to about one, and then it's gonna drop down to about zero, then it's gonna go up to about one. Um, and it's got the same threshold, which means that for a portion of the actual signal, the, the value, the voltage that we're sending into the base of the transistor is actually above the transistor's turn on voltage, which means that the transistor is going to turn on, it's going to conduct, and we're going to turn on the buzzer. And because DC buzzers are really weird and they've got some internal circuitry that makes them oscillate, it actually has enough built in capacitance that it's going to sound like it stays on. It's not going to go click, click, click at 70 hertz. Um, it actually stays on reasonably well. So that's kind of an afterthought. But it still would work uh, just fine if it didn't stay on all that time. But uh, that's how this particular instance worked out. So when, you are when you're reading noise, it averages out and then it divides that down and that divided average turns out to be below the threshold for turn on and when you have the actual signal going through for a portion of that signal this capacitor has time to fully charge which means that even after you put it through the voltage divider it's going to be above the turn on threshold of the transistor and you're going to get noise and that's basically how this thing can tell whether you're sending it a signal or whether the foot pedal isn't depressed and it's picking up background. And that was a reasonably hard thing to figure out, but the circuit to do it in the end is actually extremely simple.